Hi, I'm Barbara Selig Brown. Welcome to Stress Free Cooking. Today, Tom Beyer and I will be making a stuffed turkey breast. And the reason we're doing this stuffed turkey breast is at the end of our show, we're going to taste a very special wine, a very special Pinot Noir called Belle Gloss that we tasted for the first time in Aspen, right? right? At Hotel Jerome, and we absolutely loved it. And coincidentally, we then went to the Aspen Food and Wine Festival, and lo and behold, the people from Belle Gloss were there, and we got to actually speak to the source and the producer, so it was wonderful. So that inspired our menu for today. So we're gonna get started with the stuffing for the turkey breast. Yes. And I'm gonna put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in my saute pan here. And what I love to do with bottles from our favorite wines is use it for extra virgin olive oil because it's just fun to remember the experience of drinking that wonderful wine. So we have a little extra virgin olive oil in our saute pan. And Tom, if you wouldn't mind cutting that onion, what is your secret to cutting onions, Tom? The secret is my ski goggles to keep a man from crying while he's cutting the onions. <laughs> Works every time. It does. They're also good for skiing, right? Yeah, they help. They're, they're very important for skiing. <laughs> so that you get more bang for the buck exactly. from your ski goggles. You use them off season this way. Because <laughs> you hate to put them away, right? Exactly. So, so you cut an onion in half to start so that it doesn't roll away from you. Anything that you're cutting that is round, a carrot, an onion, a beet, a potato, it's always better to make it flat so that you have more control. So for this recipe, we need about a half cup of chopped onion. So we really don't need the whole onion. Great job. Thank you. Hey, that onion can go right in this saute pan. Actually, you know what, Tom? I'll move it over closer to you. Okay. So we're gonna saute the onion in a couple teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Okay, I'll just put that in the saute pan. That would be terrific. Thank you. And in order to minimize the amount of extra virgin olive oil I'm using, if I were trying to use a little bit less fat, I could add some chicken stock to this or vegetable stock, whatever you have, and it'll help saute the onion and allow us to use less oil. It works wonderful, I have no tears. No tears, perfect. Great, thank you. That's a good, I'm really glad you thought of that. So the next thing we need to do is the garlic, actually. So we're gonna crush two large cloves of garlic, and when you crush it, it makes it much easier to peel it. So you can see the peel comes right off once he crushes it with a chef's knife. And then you just give it a rough chop. Okay. So it's gonna be part of our stuffing. It's going to be well cooked. So we don't really have to worry about how small we cut the onion. We just want it chopped. Okay. So that'll go right in the saute pan. In the meantime, I have some sun-dried tomatoes here that were julienne, and we're gonna add those. These were not in oil, so the stock will help moisten these a little bit, but they're nice and fresh, so we don't have to worry about um, using the ones with oil. So the garlic goes in the pan. So we have garlic, onions, sun-dried tomatoes, a little extra virgin olive oil, a little stock, and this will just cook down for about five minutes or so. And while that's cooking, we're gonna chop those mushrooms. So to clean your mushrooms, all you really have to do is take a damp paper towel and wipe them. And that will get off any, any of the sterile soil that they're grown in. And you really don't want to run them under water too much because they're very porous and they absorb water and then they don't saute they soggy, well. Right? They get soggy, right. And they don't saute well, so. Right, so you can just throw them in the pan as you chop them. And then I have two cups of arugula here, and you could use arugula, you could use spinach, but this will be a big part of our stuffing, as well as orange zest. So we have a nice navel orange here, and then we have our microplane grater zesters, and I have two different sizes in my kitchen. One's very fine and one's a little bit bigger, and today I would really like us to see the zest in our stuffing, so we're gonna use the larger grater. 
So let me just give that a stir. If you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add mushrooms to this. You could just use a little more arugula. You could even use a little more sun-dried tomatoes. This is smelling really good, isn't it? It's too bad there's no such thing as smell-o-vision, right? That would be true. People have been saying that for years. Nobody's invented it. So, looks great. Are you going to zest the orange, or am I? Um, why don't you? OK. I'll zest while you're chopping mushrooms. So we're just going to zest this. The purpose of this zester is so that you don't get the white part of the citrus, lemon, orange, lime, whatever it is that you're using. It just takes away what's called the zest, which has the oils and the flavors of the orange. And the white pith can be very bitter. So that's why you want to use something like this, so that you don't end up with too much of that pith in there. And then this orange could be reused. Just put it in a plastic bag and save it and use it for another purpose. Even just peel it and eat it. Eat it, right. Or make an Aperol spritz and put a nice Perfect. slice of orange in it, right? Okay, and that looks like it's just the right amount of zest for this. Okay, and this goes in the dishwasher. So we're all done with that. Let's put that aside. And once we get all those mushrooms in there and we stir this really well, we can add our arugula. And if, as I said, if you have spinach in the house, you can use spinach. Arugula has a little bit of a peppery bite to it, and we like spice, don't we? We do. We do. So this looks great. It's delicious. Now, this will have to cool before we put it into a cold turkey breast, because you don't want those colliding temperatures, which become unsafe and create some bacteria in there. So while this is cooling, what we'll do is work on our roasted asparagus. Okay, so I'm going to let these mushrooms cook a minute, and then I'm going to add the arugula. And we'll switch over to the asparagus while this is cooking. OK. OK? Sellers was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cakebread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. Cake bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast. You can visit the winery or watch for cake bread events in your area. With an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The cake breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families. Okay, Tom, while this is continuing to cook, would you mind just trim those asparagus for me? And all you do is bend it, and wherever it breaks, that's the right spot, okay? So we're gonna put them on a parchment-lined baking sheet, toss them with a little tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, and they're gonna go into our oven to roast alongside the turkey breast. And this mixture with the mushrooms, onions, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, and orange zest is ready for me to add my arugula. And this will cook down very quickly. And then we will let this cool, and we will stuff it into the turkey breast. And if you think this needs a little bit more help, you could always add a little bit more stock to make this cook down a little bit better but this is actually cooking very nicely. And once these greens get hot, they really wilt very quickly. And how are those asparagus coming? They're coming. Some of them aren't so uh, crisp. Yeah. They're not snapping. Well, you know, you just never know. Um, 
The size of the asparagus doesn't mean whether it's better or worse. It just means that this is from a younger plant than a thicker asparagus stalk. So the thickness of the stalk actually determines how old the plant is. So this asparagus is thin, pencil thin. It's from a much younger plant. But if we were to be using asparagus that was a little thicker, it wouldn't mean that it was not fresh. It would just simply mean it was from an older asparagus plant. And asparagus takes a long time to grow. It takes about seven years, I think, for asparagus to, to be usable. I didn't realize it was so long. Yeah, it's a really long growing time. So, OK, so our stuffing is good. I'm going to turn that off. We'll give that a couple pinches of salt and pepper. And we have our salt and pepper already mixed in a little bowl on the side of the stove because it makes our life easier. We don't have to reach for the salt and the pepper separately. Just reach for one dish. Nice. That looks great. And then a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So we'll just give it a little drizzle. The parchment paper will keep it from sticking to the pan. And if you could just toss that, Tom, that would be great. And then that will go in the oven. Let's transfer this to a bowl so that we get it out of the hot pan. It'll make it cool off a little bit faster for us. It looks wonderful. I hope it tastes wonderful. OK. So let that cool. And in the meantime, while that's cooling, let's get our ingredients for our fruit tart. OK. So we have the mise en place all prepared for our fruit tart. Mise en place simply means everything's in place. And before we start cooking, we like to have everything in place. So we have all the ingredients ready for the fruit tart. And we have some oatmeal, some flour, some walnuts, and some honey. That will be the crust of our fruit tart. Then we have Crave Brothers mascarpone cheese, which will be the next layer on top of the crust, and then our fruit. And to make it a little special today, we're actually going to add a splash of Grand Marnier to the mascarpone. Crave Brothers is a family-run business producing award-winning mozzarella and many other farmstead cheeses. Their mozzarella and marinated mozzarella are fresh and light, and their mascarpone is velvety smooth. They also produce cheddar cheese curds, which are great for snacking. Their cheese is green energy produced and made from fresh, high quality milk from their own dairy farm. You can find their cheeses at www.cravecheese.com and many other national retailers. We're sure you'll enjoy these cheeses as much as we do. So I'm going to make the crust for the fruit tart. But in the meantime, Tom, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't mind taking that mascarpone cheese and putting it in that bowl. And here's the whisk. And we'll just whisk in a little bit of this Grand Marnier, maybe about two tablespoons or so. Because we don't want this mascarpone to become too thin, but Crave Brothers makes an awesome mascarpone cheese. OK. So for the crust, we have some walnuts. I have some oatmeal, some flour, and cold butter. We want the butter nice and cold, so I need to actually step over and grab that out of the fridge. So we want our butter to be nice and cold, so keep it in the fridge. That goes in here. And also our honey. So this is a couple tablespoons of honey. And this is a great measuring cup because for sticky substances like honey and mayonnaise, you just push it up from the bottom and everything comes out nice and easy. So it used to be called a wonder cup. Not sure if they still call it that anymore. OK, okay perfect. So. Just 
this looks just about right. If it seems a little too sticky, you could always add a little drop or two of water, but actually this looks great. So we're done with this. Okay, so we'll take the blade out of here and we get rid of this. That's fine, thanks. And we have our tart pan with a removable bottom so that it makes it easier to get our tart crust out of here. So I'm just gonna scoop this out of the food processor, put it into the tart pan. And then we'll just pat it down. And to do that without a whole lot of mess, I'm just gonna wet my hands. Okay, and this will keep it from sticking to me. So I have a little bit less messiness. So just pat this out to cover the bottom of the pan. You don't even have to go up the sides. It's just a very simple, very easy, very healthy dessert. There's a lot less calories in this because we've used honey, which is more easily absorbed into your bloodstream, especially for people with diabetes. And so now once this is done, this goes into the oven. I'm gonna bake this at about 350 for about 15 minutes until it's golden brown. Thank you. And then when it comes out, we'll put our mascarpone on top and our berries on top and it will be all set to go. So I think we're gonna return to our turkey. Let me clean up from the tart and we'll return to the turkey breast. Now that our stuffing has cooled, I can return to my turkey breast. So I have one half of a whole turkey breast that I deboned earlier. You can ask them to debone it wherever you buy a turkey breast. Sometimes it's also called turkey London broil. They'll remove the skin and they'll sell it without the skin and they call it turkey London broil and it's actually great. You can grill it and then you can slice it just like a London broil. But for this, I wanna butterfly this a little bit. So I'm gonna open it up as much as I can so that I have more surface area here for my stuffing. So just very carefully, you're gonna open it up. And then, could I have that towel over there to wipe my hands on? Thanks. So we're gonna make sure we wipe our hands, thanks. And then we're just gonna put the stuffing in the center. So now that our stuffing is on top of our turkey breast, what we wanna do is roll it up and I am gonna place some string underneath, like so. Just run it right under, tie it up. And just slide it right under. And there we go. So trim those? Yes, that would be great, thank you. So we'll trim these. These are my Cutco kitchen shears, which I absolutely love because they come apart and they go right in my dishwasher. I love the red color. So I have a roasting pan here, which has been sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. And I wanna make sure I get all the stuffing ingredients in the pan because they'll actually give us nice flavor. Okay. And then Tom, would you sprinkle that with a little salt and pepper? You can use the one that we already mixed. That would be terrific, thanks. And then we're gonna drizzle it with a little extra virgin olive oil. Good. Perfect. So a little extra virgin olive oil right on top. Terrific. And we'll just rub this in. And this is ready to go into the oven. So I'm gonna wash my hands, of course, before I put it in the oven. oven because it has a fan in it and it circulates the heat so I get more even cooking. So that would take about maybe 30, 40 minutes to cook. But in the interest of television, we happen to have one that's already cooked. Would you grab that for us? You may need a pot holder for that. Fantastic, okay. 
So we take our turkey breast right out of here and put it on a cutting board. I'll cut my strings. So I'm just gonna make some nice slices in my turkey breast. So we'll put this on our serving dish. And you can see all the great things that are in our stuffing. You can see the different colors from the spinach, the sun-dried tomato. And let's do a little double row here. That looks wonderful. It smells good too, don't you yes, think? It does. I see a nice piece of orange in there as well from the zesting. And that would be ready to serve. But in the meantime, before we taste that, let's finish up our tart. Okay. Okay, so could you grab that out of the oven? We need to finish the tart. Thank you. And I just need that spatula. And the easiest way to get your tart out of the pan is to put it on something small and just let the ring drop. And then we'll put this on a serving dish. And this one has been cooled. And then we top it with our mascarpone cheese that we've mixed with our Grand Marnier. Spread that out nice and evenly. And we have a little bit extra here, so let's use that up. It's a shame to waste anything in the kitchen. And then we just top it with the berries. And these are just plain fresh berries. I haven't done anything to the berries, but wash them and cut the strawberries. And mound them up. The more the merrier. Oops, runaway berry. Okay, so there's our fruit tart and our turkey breast. And I think it's time for us to give a taste. Okay. But before we taste, we also want to get our wine. We'll get our wine, okay. We have a Belle Gloss Pinot Noir. richest, most delicious Pinot Noirs that I've ever had. Don't you agree? We had this in Aspen. We had this in Aspen. It was just such a pleasant surprise. We ordered it at the Hotel Jerome, not really being familiar with it, and we loved it so much that now we look for it all the time. But classic Pinot Noir, but very rich, some berry flavors. It's a little bit lighter red. Cheers, Tom. Thanks for your help. Thank you. as wonderful as I remember it. It's very lush, very silky, it's fantastic. Very warm. All right, would you get those serving plates for us, please? I'll give us a piece of the tart and a piece of the turkey. Thank you. And could you grab a knife behind you also, please? of this with all the stuffing, stuffing, which is still steaming a little bit. So here you go. How is it? It's delicious. You haven't had that one before, have you? No, no, it's good. 
All right. You got a big taste of the orange. Zest. You got the orange in there, and yeah. citrus always adds such a nice freshness to a dish. Okay, so let's get a little piece of tart. It's a little messy, but I think messy is good. Okay, and since we have it so well loaded with berries, I want to get all the extra berries from here. Okay. There you go, Tom. You give that a little taste. It's wonderful. The fresh berries and how's the mascarpone with the Grand Marnier? Tastes wonderful. And you don't have to put the Grand Marnier in. If you're feeding kids and you don't want to put the Grand Marnier in, you can use vanilla or just serve it plain. Or use it if the kids don't go to sleep at night. <laughs> Tom, I want to thank you for all your help. You're always a great helper in the kitchen and lots of fun. Thank you for showing me so much. I'm Barbara Seelig Brown. This is Tom Beyer. Thank you for watching Stress Free Cooking. You can find us on Instagram at Stress Free Cook, on Facebook, Stress Free Cooking with host Barbara Seelig Brown. And we also have a website with recipes for you, stressfreecooking.com. So I hope you'll join us again. Happy cooking.